Okay, so this is for Animation 1, which is a MEMS High Frequency Gravity Wave Generator. Uh, MEMS stands for Microelectromechanical, and you can use piezoelectric arrays or some other microelectromechanical structures so that you get motion that's synchronized. And it's synchronized so tightly that the motion occurs uh, simultaneously with the objects to generate a gravitational wave. The, the objects can be moved in small pieces all simultaneously so that it would be a much more drastic of a motion that you could ever do with a mechanically physical object. For instance, a bar that would bend when you would twist it would not generate the same gravitational wave signature as one of these MEMS arrays. The MEMS arrays are much better for this because you can have each piece of the array moving uh, in synchronization. If you use uh, a piece of it on one uh, end of an axis of a circumference of a circle and you use another array on the other end and you move those two in unison, you'll wind up in the middle of the radius of rotation with a distribution of gravitational waves that will go up and will go down. And it's a, a, in a kind of a teardrop uh, shape, uh, an inverse teardrop shape, so that uh, the largest amount of gravitational waves come straight up out of the axis of rotation and straight down from the axis of rotation. And so the thinking here is that we could detect gravitational waves in a way that prevents false alarms by measuring uh, with a detector above the rotation of axis and below the axis of rotation uh, with simultaneous detections. And we'd be using a, a Gerstenstein type detector that has a, a strong magnetic field within the detector. The gravitational wave enters the magnetic field and a photon will come out of that magnetic field and impinge upon a detector. There's been a new class of detectors that have been invented by Yale called uh, circuit QED detectors. And these detectors are so sensitive that a microwave uh, photon can be detected. This is the first time we've been able to detect individual microwave photons. This kind of detector would be ideal for using uh, because of its sensitivity with these gravitational waves. We would generate a gravitational wave that has microwave frequencies and when it goes through the uh, magnetic field by the inverse Gerstenstein effect, or as the, as the Chinese call it, synchro resonance effect, um, that gravitational wave, then microwave frequency gravitational wave, then generates a microwave RF signal. And that microwave RF signal is made up of these microwave photons. Each microwave photon would then be detected by the circuit QED detector. That pretty much um, represents what we're doing in animation. In animation number two, uh, we're looking at an X-ray uh, target uh, pair, a pair of X-ray targets that both move in unison on an axis of rotation. Uh, either two different lasers that are synchronized or one laser with the beam split to two different targets are arranged such that when uh, the X-ray photon pulse that uh, comes out of the X-ray laser hits a target, there's another target on the same axis of rotation. It's on the opposite end of the axis of rotation. It moves in the opposite manner. And those targets uh, mechanically jerk. And that's that jerk or change of acceleration that causes uh, gravitational wave energy to come out of the axis of rotation. Uh, once the gravitational wave energy uh, extends out of the axis of rotation, uh, it will propagate for a certain distance until it hits uh, detectors that are arranged above and below the axis of rotation. Uh, those detectors are typically, uh, right now we're, we're considering using uh, Gerstenstein detection, which is where a gravitational wave will pass through a strong magnetic field, and in, in doing so, couples to the magnetic field and creates a photon. Uh, the photon will be the same exact frequency as the frequency of the gravitational wave. So for instance, if we have broad spectrum of gravitational waves, uh, from the impact of these X-ray lasers onto the target, uh, then that broad spectrum of gravitational wave energy will, will come out of the axis of rotation. Uh, now, at least some of the uh, spectrum of the gravitational waves will fall into the microwave range. Uh, and so if we had, for instance, a microwave uh, filter, and we filtered uh, all of the uh, gravitational wave energy that's coupled through this magnetic field of the Gerstenstein detector and converted to electromagnetics, 
we could uh, look for the signature of this gravitational wave once it's been converted to electromagnetism. Uh, and we could look for that signature in terms of individual photons. Uh, with something called a circuit QED detector, you can uh, literally measure individual microwave photons, which, which are sensitive enough that we could pick up uh, the small signal that's expected to be generated by these gravitational wave experiments. We would then look at the um, output spectrum of this uh, circuit QED detector to change, to see the, uh, there's a fringe pattern uh, that's representative of, of a real signal, of a trapped photon. The photon's ringing around inside of this circuit and you will see this resonance in the spectrum of the output of the detector. And that kind of sums up the um, X-ray high frequency gravity wave generator. Animation 3 is a passive high frequency gravity wave detector. Uh, a passive detector, uh, we're calling it passive because it doesn't have any synchro resonance laser. It simply has a very strong magnetic field that once the uh, gravitational wave enters the strong magnetic field, by the inverse Gerstenstein effect, it will generate an, ele an electromagnetic pulse or, 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 uh, of the same frequency as the gravitational wave. So this gravitational wave comes up through the strong magnetic field at some point, uh, creating a uh, synchro resonance photon. Then the synchro resonance photon is what's actually detected. And this can be detected by um, uh, very sensitive detection devices called circuit QED detectors. The circuit QED detector is, is a type of detector that once it traps a photon will actually show the output spectrum of the photon oscillating within the circuit. So you'll see in the spectrum a fringe pattern that indicates a, a trapped photon. Uh, in order to make sure that uh, the photon is really from a gravitational wave, we'll probably use an array of these detectors. Uh, for instance, if there is an axis of rotation and we're expecting the gravitational waves to come out of that axis, we may use the detector above the axis and below the axis and look for gravitational waves in both directions uh, to make sure that we really know that the, the source of this photon is from a gravitational wave. Okay, animation number four is an active high frequency gravity wave detector. So in the active detector, we have a strong uh, laser that's tuned to the same frequency as the expected incoming gravitational wave. Uh, this then synchro resonates with the gravitational wave in a strong magnetic field such that um, perturbative photon flux is what uh, Professor Lee calls it. Uh, this is a, a, a design that was first conceived of by Fang Yu Li of China. And Professor Li uh, refers to it as synchro resonance. It's also been called the Gerstenstein effect from the original discoverer of the effect, uh, a Gerstenstein, um, Professor Gerstenstein of Russia. And in this effect, um, if you're overlapping a gravitational wave with an electromagnetic wave uh, in a strong magnetic field, you'll get a per per perturbative, per a perturbative uh, photon flux. Uh, this is the actual signal of, uh, of the gravitational wave. If you look for this perturbative photon flux at your detector um, in a particular frequency band, you should be able to see it uh, using a circuit QED detector. So the circuit QED detector can measure as little as one photon of signal. Uh, what you'll have to be careful with the active detection is that we've filtered out completely all of the background photon flux from the perturbative photon flux to make sure that the photon flux we're measuring is not from the background, but is actually from a signal uh, of synchro resonance. Uh, once, that, once that detection has occurred, the circuit QED detector will put out a fringe pattern that represents the trapped photon circulating about in this QED circuit. And that fringe pattern will, will show up in the spectrograph of the energy coming out of the, of the photon detector. Animation number five. Okay, in animation number five, we're showing a possible application for gravitational waves. Uh, a gravitational wave generator, if we want to make it strong, is going to be very large. And so this will be an earthbound device uh, that could be established at, for instance, um, a large timekeeping facility, such as the Naval Observatory. Uh, and what, would, what you could do with uh, 
the frequency time standard, uh, gravitational wave frequency time standard, would be to tie it to, for instance, a cesium clock uh, that is used as a reference signal, and once, once per second send out a gravitational wave burst. The nice thing about the gravitational wave burst is that very little disturbs the gravitational waves. So the, they can go right through the Earth uh, with, without much dispersion, uh, without um, much change in group velocity, uh, and then they'll continue to spread out until they hit uh, detection circuits that can be placed wherever you want. For instance, detection circuits could be put on all the GPS satellites. When this gravitational wave burst emanates out, if you know your position, uh, you can calculate uh, then the relative timing between different receivers. Or vice versa, if you know the relative timing between the receivers, you can calculate uh, the overall positions of the satellites. Uh, so with enough signals uh, located in different spots on the Earth, you have enough uh, knowns that you can calculate your unknowns. So for instance, with a, an array of three gravitational wave generators, you can actually determine uh, the exact position and timing uh, of any GPS satellite with respect to any other satellite. And this would be a way to, to uh, set up a frequency time standard that could calibrate the GPS system. This is just one of the many applications of, of uh, gravitational wave frequency time standard. In the animation itself, we see uh, a, a gravitational wave generator create the distribution at the Earth ground station. That distribution uh, emanates at all over 2 pi steradian over the entire Earth and continues to extend out from the Earth uh, as a narrow band of, of uh, gravitational wave pulse energy until it hits the, the various detectors on, on the satellites that are in orbit. And uh, when it does that, it will create a pulse at the detector, and the timing of that pulse can be used as a frequency time standard. That's basically animation 5. So I think that wraps up the animations.